Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie. What's the matter? Don't you guys hear good? Hello, Matthews. Want to sell me some tickets to a Flatfoots festival? This is official business. The chief wants to see you. Us? What for? You'll find out. Get in. Take your hands off. If you don't mind. I've got the strangest feeling I've been here before. Probably in another life when you were a free spirit. <laughs> well, Inspector, what are you doing here? Airing some dirty linen? Mm. Hello, Miley. Hello, Blackie. I get it, Blackie. It's a surprise party. Well, I'm surprised. I had a nice time. See you later. Come back here. OK. Got something funny to say now? Uh-uh, mustn't touch. The doc says it happened about an hour ago. Severed aorta, death by profuse hemorrhage. What do you know about it? Nothing, are we supposed to? That's your laundry, isn't it? Sure, my name's on the slip. Was Charlie Wu here when you brought it in? Gosh, Blackie, do you think he was lying there when we were here? That's precisely what I'm gonna find out. Search him, Matthews. The young lady says she found her uncle's body less than a minute after you left here. Is that right, miss? Well, what's this? Just a reminder of the shirts I left. You know what I'm talking about, this Chinese writing. Well, I don't read Chinese, just Sanskrit. You mean to tell me that a man of your background and experience doesn't recognize a lottery ticket when he sees one? Well, I hadn't really noticed. Seems to be a lot of things you haven't noticed. I don't suppose you know that Charlie Wu was arrested and convicted once on a lottery rap. Oh, and you think he went back in the racket, huh? That's the general idea. Oh, I see. And we were trying to muscle in on the old fellow, and he wouldn't play ball with us, so we dusted him off. Is that what you're trying to say in your own inimitable way? Stop putting words in my mouth. <laughs> if you really gave the guy the quietus, you certainly wouldn't leave your name and address lying around. What I'm trying to say is that you know what's going on, and you'll make it easier for everybody if you'll talk now. Well, let's not complicate the simple facts, Inspector. I brought in my laundry. Wu wasn't here. I picked up a scrap of paper, wrote my name on it. Then I made a list of my laundry on another scrap of paper. Then I left. That's all. Period. May we go home now, teacher? I haven't got enough to hold you on yet. You're so right. But I have a feeling this little item will bring us together again in the very oh, near future. I can hardly wait. Grab a cab, Brunt. May we drop you someplace? Never mind, Blackie. I'll need her for more vital statistics. Well, if you need any help, please call on me. Thanks, Blackie. It goes for you, too, Inspector. Did your uncle ever quarrel with anyone? No, sir. Not that I know of. What about this Tong War business? That still goes on, doesn't it? Chinatown's record should be your answer to that. Yeah, you're right. Nothing ever happens down here. One case of juvenile delinquency in two years. There is something, Inspector. Huh? I didn't think it was important. Lady, everything is important. Well, I remember a case Just we a had once. Go ahead. Uncle Charlie phoned Mr. Craddock last night at the club. Mr. Craddock? Yes, he's the owner. Of what? The club cafe where I work. I'm an entertainer there. Go on. What do you telephone him about? About a package he found in his laundry bag. What do you mean, a package? That's what I don't know. Uncle always picked up the laundry from the club every Thursday night. He did the same yesterday. But Mr. Craddock must have put something in the bag by mistake. Anyway, he asked me to come here and pick it up for him. Did he tell you what was in that package? He didn't know himself. Apparently, he couldn't make out what Uncle Charlie was trying to tell him. That's why he asked me to come here. Hmm. And that's the way you found your uncle when you came in? Yes. But no package? To tell the truth, I forgot about it until just now. When you searched this place, did you find any such thing? Just them laundry bundles. Hmm. Let's drop in on this club cafe. I'd like to meet your boss. That is, if you're up to it. No, I haven't any idea what was in that package. The old man was hard enough to understand normally, but over the telephone, excited like he was, it was next to impossible. But, Mr. Craddock, I distinctly remember you telling me the package was valuable. I did? Oh, yes. I think Charlie kept saying it was worth a lot of money. Yeah, that's right. A lot of dollar, he kept saying. A lot of dollar. 
There you are. Maybe you left your billfold in your laundry. What is this? You trying to hang this on me as a cover-up for yourself? Of course not. I wasn't even thinking of that. What do you mean she's trying to cover up for herself? Her uncle objected to her working in a bar. Every time he came in here, there was a fight. Not true? Uncle and I didn't fight, sir. It was just a difference of opinion, a family quarrel. You don't think that I... You couldn't possibly think such a thing. <clears throat> I'm sorry to bother you. Probably nothing to it, but you know how it is. Sure, sure, I know, Inspector. All routine, huh? I'll be seeing you. Sure, Inspector. Uh, drop in any time. Uh, any time, that is, when you're off duty. I'll get it, Blackie. It's probably my lane. This is awfully nice of you, Blackie. Not at all. Come on in, my lane. Sit down. I've just been reading a lot of nonsense in the paper. Yeah, Faraday's still sticking to a story that the old Chinese lottery game is being dragged out of the mothballs. If that's all the police have, you've got nothing to worry about. It's really not half as bad as you sounded on the phone. You're wrong, Blackie. From what I gathered, the police want a quick conviction. They'll pin it on me, you, or anyone else if they can get away with it. Hey, wait a minute. You can't go making accusations like that. He's right, my Ling. I don't care what else you say about him, but Faraday's an honest cop. You don't seem to realize you're under as much suspicion as I am, if not more. Well, at the moment, I can't think of anything to change that. Are you forgetting what I told you over the phone about the package in the laundry bag? You don't really expect anyone to find that, do you, my Ling? I wasn't thinking of finding it. What I meant was, Craddock knows more than he admits, and he should be watched. Good. And you're the one to do the watching. You work there. Not anymore. He discharged me. Said it would hurt his business to have cops coming around asking me questions. It might be a good idea to case this guy. Sort of check up on his private life. That's really what I came to see you about. All right, my Ling. If it'll make you any happier, we'll give it a go. Thanks, Blackie. Now, keep your eyes open. Let us know anything that happens, no matter how unimportant it seems. Good night, and thanks again. Good night, and thank you. Guess how much good do you think you're going to do? Oh, I didn't have the heart to turn her down. Besides, she's awful pretty. <laughs> you were right, Chief. The Chinese dame went straight to Blackie's apartment. I knew it. I knew they'd fit into this thing somehow. You want me to pick them up? Oh, why do you always want to arrest people? Don't be so premature. Huh? Now, try to follow this carefully. We're giving Blackie and the Runt plenty of rope, right? Right. Sooner or later, they'll tie themselves up with it, right? Oh, I get it, Chief. You want to nab them in the middle of operating this lottery, right? Right. In the meantime, I'll just go on doing what I'm doing. Well, that ought to be harmless enough. Don't worry about me, Chief. Shadowing guys is the kind of job I do best. Just be careful you don't lose yourself in your work. Right. Long? Long enough. I hate waiting at a bar alone. Men always think a girl wants company. Someone been annoying you? Oh, no, I just mean in general. Oh. Well, I almost forgot. I picked this up at Wong's. Just a little something to prove I'm thinking about you all the time. Oh, it's lovely. Once more, huh? Oh, thank you. Have one yourself. 
No, I can't manage that stuff. All tastes the same to me. Just a little friendly advice, brother. No good can come from downing them so fast. I don't even feel it. That's because I'm a prestidigitator. I wouldn't know about that. I've always been a Democrat myself. <laughs> I've got to go. So soon? Thanks. What do I owe you? Buck this time. There you are. Thank you. Come in again. Sure you don't mind? No, all kind of characters come in here. We ain't particular. <laughs> How'd it go? Okay. I tagged him from his apartment just like you said. He came right down to the club. The only place he stopped off was at Wong's Curio Shop. Yeah, he bought a jade clip there. Gave it to his girlfriend. Nothing illegal in that, is there? Oh, so far, he seems to be a pretty solid citizen. Look, if this guy was in as deep as Miley figures, he wouldn't have fired her, would he? It only makes him look more suspicious. Well, maybe his girlfriend was jealous of Miley and made him do it. Is this baby talking about the one who came out of the cafe just before you did? That's right. <laughs> she sure has a build on her. Now, let's keep our mind on our work. Well, the only reason I noticed it, it struck me funny, a rare dish like that would go into a mousetrap like the cameo. What's the cameo? The moving picture theater down the street. You mean she went to a movie? Naturally. What else would she be doing in there? Let's see what's playing at the cameo. Oh, you're not gonna drag me in there. I've got other plans for you. Come on, pay the boy. Good afternoon, sir. You'll find most of the Lowe's seats vacant. Lowe's? Yeah, the seats with the backs on them. Did you like the picture? Yes, I liked it the first time I saw it, two years ago. So you finally came home, huh? Did you have a good time? What do you mean, did I have a good time? Well, you must have had a good time or you wouldn't have stayed out so late. Where were you and why didn't you phone? Oh, Blackie, I wanted to, but I was afraid. Now, don't tell me you lost her. I didn't lose her. Where did she go? Uptown. Where uptown? To where she lives. And then? And then nothing happened. I cased the building, even hung around the hall. Anybody call on her? No. Is she still there? No, she left about 5.30. I stayed right with her all the way downtown to where she works as a shill. A what? You heard me, a shill. Come on. What joint's she working for? This will kill you, Blackie. The Chinatown bus. Are you kidding? You, you mean the sightseeing bus? Uh-huh. Oh, it's very interesting. Are we still time to catch her act? I think she ought to be working till about 12. We can make it if we hurry. How about Matthews? Isn't he still watching from across the street? He was a few minutes ago, yes. Well, how are we going to get out? Say, Runch, you remember that electric train we bought young Ronnie for Christmas and then kept for ourselves to play with? Sure, but how's that going to help us? <laughs> You'll see. <laughs>
Step right into the bus, folks, and treat yourself to the thrill of a lifetime. We're about to take you on a tour through the exotic and mysterious streets of Chinatown where you'll see sights you've never seen before. Don't be bashful, folks. Step up and get in the bus and see how life has lived in the strange and romantic Far East. How about you two fellas? Now, you both look like you've got the real American spirit for high adventure. We've got a special bargain on tonight, only $2 per person. That's for tonight only. So why don't you join us, huh? Yes, sir. $4. That's money well spent. Step up, folks, and spend a night that you won't forget the rest of your lives. She ought to be getting off any minute now. Looks like they got enough yokels on board. Hey. Let's shove off, Les. So she ought to be getting off any minute, huh? Hey, Franklin! Only watch your step getting out of the bus, please. Now, if you'll just follow me, ladies and gentlemen, I'll endeavor to explain some of the highlights as we go along. Here we go. This, ladies and gentlemen, winds up our regular tour. But for those of you, however, who are of a more daring and adventurous nature, I have a special offer to make. Now, you have just seen the usual aspects of Chinese life, but however, there is another side to Chinatown known only to a few favorite Occidentals like myself. I think you all know just what I mean. In making you this offer, there are certain personal risks that are involved, so I am obliged to ask you for the small additional sum of one dollar. For one dollar, I will show you thrills that will haunt you for the rest of your days. You ladies needn't fear for your safety because I am assuming all responsibility. However, I suggest the cautious ones return to the bus and await our return. Now, who amongst you has the courage to accept this challenge of adventure? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And you, sir. Thank you, miss. Thank you. Thank you. And you, sir. And you, sir. Follow me, please. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to go down into the secret passages where no man, no woman, is safe alone. Kindly watch your step. Now, let's keep it very quiet, please. open. Maybe we will. Hey, you two back there. No stragglers. Okay. Let me warn you all, as a precautionary measure to stay as closely together as possible. It's a Chinese gambling den. Okay. Okay. They're playing fantail. All right, fellas, let's pick up the bridge game where we left off. What was the bid? Three no Trump, I believe. It's a four no Trump. Will you stop your activity?
Chinese slave girls working their way to freedom and a fuller life. You're too young for that. Give the others a chance. Hey, that's the real stuff, ain't it? You thought you said she was Craddock's girl. Boy, that kid really gets around, don't she? That's all, folks. Please. That'll be all. Kindly follow me. Relax. They've gone. Now, what was I saying? Oh, yes, about Marge. It happened on the 8th Avenue subway, night before last. Marge was sitting there perfectly still, and this horrible-looking man came up and sat by her. I'm telling you, she just... We better get out of here. Apparently, the Tong Wars are still on. What you just saw was one of the hatchet men wreaking his vengeance. Follow me. Hey, this ought to be reported. It's a regular crime wave. Come, boy. Got a match? Sure. We've got just one more stop at Wong's Curio Shop, folks. Then we'll call it a night. I wonder what happened to Red. Ain't she with the others? No. Hey, fellas, let's go. I've got a schedule to make. Is this the stuff I brought you tonight? Yes. I will begin working on it first thing in the morning. You'll begin working on it right now. Why this sudden hurry? The customers are in a hurry. Now get busy. The customers? That is not true. You do not fool me any longer. You don't say. I should have gone back to Holland when my permit expired. Now I am a criminal and there is nothing left. Oh, relax, Rolf. It isn't as bad as all that. I do this work because I was promised everything will be arranged. And then, too late, I find I am working with stolen goods. Now it is the police that is coming. Is that not so? You let us worry about that. You do your work. You'll be allowed five minutes in which to purchase a souvenir or memento of your exciting trip. Mr. Wong here will be pleased to assist you in finding a suitable gift for the folks back home. This spieler has got himself quite a racket. I'll bet he even gets a kickback on this. May I help you, sir? Oh, no, thanks. We're just looking around. Thank you, sir. I, uh, I've changed my mind. I'd like to buy some tea. Yes, sir. Any particular blend? Well, I don't know much about tea. I'll take the kind the guide just bought. What do you want tea for? i never seen you drink that stuff. I believe it was the Chai Chi blend, sir. Well, uh, didn't you get his from under the counter? 
I'm sorry, sir. That's a special blend made up for him once a week. But this chai chi blend is very similar, sir. It even has the sprinkling of the rose petals. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Rose petals and all. That enough? Eighty-five, ninety, one dollar. Thank you, sir. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, he will. Roses are his favorite flower. I still think I'd rather have the same kind of tea the guide bought. I get it, Blackie. The old switcheroo. The old switcheroo. I'm sorry. Somebody pushed me. I, I do hope I didn't hurt you. Well, let's still make a federal case out of it. McAllister. Let me speak to Inspector Faraday. Yeah? He is? When he calls in, tell him that I saw Boston Black in the run down here in Chinatown around midnight. Right you are. We never should have taken our eyes off that guide, that's what. We can find him anytime we want. Right now, I'm more interested in reading the tea leaves. Hey, I feel just like when I was a kid and opened a box of Cracker Jacks. What's your guess? My guess is no prizes, just tea. After all our trouble, I think we should at least get a tin whistle. That you, Matthews? Yeah. You my relief? Relief from what? Your own dull company? Oh, it's you, Chief. What keeps you up so late? I can't sleep for worrying about all the trouble you managed to avoid. Huh? Oh, there's been no trouble. All is quiet on the west side front. Would it disturb your peace of mind if I told you Blackie and the Runt were seen in Chinatown tonight? No. Nothing ever disturbs... <gasps> what? But, 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 but it can't be. I, I've been watching Blackie pace the floor all night. You must have astigmatism. Huh? Forget it. But, but I'll bet you they're up there right now. Right now? That I don't doubt. Here's another one. This is the kind of surprise package poor old Charlie Wu must have found in that laundry bag. Hey, no wonder they done him in. Jewel's set up in Chinatown. Who'd ever have thought of that? You think it's a Chinese mob? With maybe Wong acting as a front? Could be. That spieler was obviously running the stuff out from Wong's. Hey, did you notice these things? They're pretty small. Nothing here much over two carrots. Well, they might have been broken out of their original settings and recut. The runt, I'll bet that's it. The jewels go through Chinatown for alteration. I think you got something there. Sure. Gems moved out of Wong's via the tourist bus. A red-headed babe was likely to be the contact between that guide and Craddock. You think Craddock's the head man? Everything points that way. Yeah, maybe Wong is the diamond cutter. Well, if I was sure of that run, I'd let the police in on this. You've got to remember that Wong's clerk passed those stones to the spieler. Now, Wong himself may be on the level. Yeah, but you know about the clerk, Craddock, and the others. What more do you want? I'm for telling the cops. Well, at this particular moment, the only thing those little sparklers prove is that we now have them. Yeah, and as the Spanish would say, ay, 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 ay. Yes. See you in there. Open up in there. It's Faraday. Yes? You see, Chief? Come on, open up. Uh, who is it? You know who it is. Open up. Uh, just a minute. Blackie's taking a nap. Come on. Taking a nap, eh? Good evening, Inspector. This is an unpleasant surprise. Did you boys have a nice time in Chinatown? Wonderful, thanks. What did I tell you, Matthews? You were right, Chief. You could make it easier for all of us if you would tell me what you were doing down there tonight. Oh, just looking around. For what? For laughs. <laughs> Frisco, Matthews. Don't you know that people who carry guns must have inferiority complexes? Hmm. Is that a fact? Hmm. All the while, I thought they only had to have permits. What's this? That's tea. Do tell. Send this down to the lab for a chemical analysis. Yes, Chief. May I ask why we're being subjected to this indignity? We're checking on an unexplained angle, which is none of your business. Or is it? <laughs> it's all over my head like an awning, Inspector. Drop around sometime for tea, if it's tea. 
If it's not, we'll be dropping around on you. That'll be charming. I hate to think what's going to happen when they dump that tea out and find those rocks. Oh, that will be terrible, won't it? Yeah, we better start packing. I'll see if we can get reservations on that morning flight to London. Good, and in the meantime, I'll catch up on my beauty sleep. Night, night. Hey, Blackie, what are you limping for? If you had a shoe full of jewels, you'd be limping too. I still say we should have caught that flight and send them gems to Faraday from London. Knowing what we do, that would be silly. All I can think of right now is we could be flying away like men. The way you're going, we'll wind up flying away like angels. And I'm too young to die. Good morning. Good morning. I, uh, I'm not quite satisfied with the purchase I made last night. I think it would be less confusing if I could talk to the clerk who waited on me. I'm the owner of the store. If you have a complaint, I'd be more than happy to make an adjustment. Oh, well, I wouldn't want to cause any trouble for your clerk, but I thought if I could talk to him, we could settle the thing in a moment. I'm sorry. He won't be here till this afternoon. Well, have you any idea where he lives? I'm very sorry. I do not know. I see. Well, thank you just the same. Come, boy. One thing, sure, we put ourselves out in the open, and I don't mean the fresh air. Well, suppose he does try to corner us. At least we'll have something to tie onto. Yeah, but what a way to live. Or will we? <laughs> Let's see what Craddock's doing at his place so early in the morning. We aren't open yet. This is something that can't wait. Why don't you go around to Ryan's bar? He opens early to handle cases like yours. Oh, you got me all wrong. We want to talk to you about your girlfriend. She had an accident or something? Come on in. Did Red tell you to come here? Is she in some kind of a jam? What are you so jumpy about? I ain't jumpy. What should I be jumpy for? Hey, weren't you in here a couple of days ago? Mm-hmm. Oh, I get it now. A couple of private dicks trying to set me up for a shakedown, huh? Or he catch me involved in something. Now, take it easy, pal. It ain't what he thinks at all, is it? No, it's worse. Much worse. How about coming into the office? Okay, pal. Got some good cigars. Skip the smokes. Anything you want to drink? Skip the drinks. What's this all about now, gents? Well, I'll make it brief. We want to cut in this jewel racket you're running down here. You must be out of your mind. I don't know anything about any jewels. Look, pal, don't lie to us. We've cased the whole works. Sure. From you to Red to a bus driver and to Wong's. <laughs> Just like a four-horse parley. And we got a tea bag full of ice to prove it. I don't know from nothing. I run a respectable cafe and that's all. And what's that redhead always hanging around here for? I don't like your tone of voice about her. She's a personal friend of mine. Well, she may be personal, but she certainly ain't exclusive. We know all about her close relationship with that fast-talking bus driver. You mean Les? Yeah, if that's his name, yeah. You're crazy. She hasn't even made his acquaintance yet. <laughs> Next thing he'll be telling me she ain't no shill. What? You heard him a come on for that tourist bus. Sure. Gives her a lot of time with your rival, don't it, pal? Yeah, I'm catching on fast. It seems I've been made a victim of circumstantial evidence. Like having something hid in your laundry bag, huh? Is that jewels in there? You're getting hot, brother. You're getting hot. Well, I didn't put them in there, but I'm beginning to get a good idea who did. Yeah? Come on, talk. I love to hear the dirt. Well, it's this way. Last Thursday, just before Charlie comes by to pick up the laundry, Red comes running in saying a man's been following her. She's scared, see? Yeah. A little while later, the guy comes in. I tell her to slip in here, and I go over and talk to him. It turns out he's just trying to make a date with her, so I kick him out. What happened? That's all. I don't get it either. Don't you see? My laundry bag was in here all the time. She must have thought the guy was a cop and got scared. Say, now, there's some other things you want to... Oh, no. I couldn't see anybody. How about him? We can't do him any good. Come on. How are you, Mr. Wong? Nice day, isn't it? Lovely, indeed. Hello, Blackie. Excuse me, please. 
Have you been talking to Mr. Craddock? Uh, yes. Something exciting's happened. I can tell. Marlene, do you know a quiet place where we can talk? Of course. First, I'd like to pick up my check, though. Mm, well, you'd better make it some other time. Yeah, this ain't a psychopathical moment. But he told me to come in this morning. His plans have been changed. How do you do, Mr. Durant? Good morning, my lady. Gentlemen. Hey, ain't this one of them secret passageways we went through with the guide? He's right, Myling. How about that? It's the best place I could think of. You see, the tourists won't be coming through yet for a while. Good. In here. Hey, what's all this? It's the wardrobe room. You know, I could really get a big kick out of this if I wasn't so worried. Supposing some of the actors should come in. They're all very good friends of mine. I used to be one of those slave girls myself. <laughs> no, really? So speaking of the shows they put on down here, what do you know about the tourist guide, Les? Les? Mm -hmm. He's been working here for years. Seems to be a very nice fellow. So sorry, Missy. He's a crook. A crook? We caught him passing stolen jewels last night. Your hunch about the laundry bag was right, but you were wrong about Craddock. Somebody just killed him. Looks as though he got his for the same reason they bumped off your Uncle Charlie. He knew too much. Well, Mr. Gerard, great baseball weather, huh? Indeed it is, indeed it is. Did you hear that game yesterday? I uh, read about it last night. Yeah, it's too bad Escobesky had to go and fumble that drive through short. Lost the game for him. I'll say it. Say, there's less already. I didn't know it was that late. <laughs> Got to open up the theater. Be seeing you. Here's the chemist with the report, Chief. Will you find anything? Yes, we found just what it says on the package. Tea. Yeah, I know that, but what else? Uh, traces of rose petals. That all? Sure, you can go right ahead and drink it. Why you like it with rose petals is beyond me. Who said I liked it with rose petals? <laughs> Yeah, Faraday speaking. If he doesn't like it with rose petals, why did he buy it that way? He didn't buy it. He took it. Took it? Well, now, things must be getting tough. Did you say Craddock? I'll be right down. That was the bartender from the club cafe. Craddock's been murdered down there. as a precautionary measure to stay as closely together as possible. This is a Chinese gambling den. Uh, playing fan tan. This should be of interest to you. Chinese slave girls working their way to freedom and a fuller life. You sure you don't mean working their way through college? Kindly follow me. It's a hatchet man running amok. Can somebody do something to that man? I never interfered at all, Walter. He never interfered. Oh, he's killing the guy. Not a bad idea. Somebody do something. Oh, Jeez. stay out of the air. Can't you see he's just knocking himself out for laughs? Oh, no, I don't Certainly. believe it. Certainly. I've seen these things a thousand times. This guy's out colder than yesterday's pot roast. Yeah, the handle's harder than I thought. Come on. I think he's coming too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
We hope you have enjoyed our performance. We have tried to show you a little old-time Chinatown melodrama. It was all meant in the spirit of good, clean fun. And now, if you'll follow me, I'll take you back to your bus. Your guide will rejoin you just as soon as he has straightened his tie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, look, we lifted the stuff from you last night, so we know you're guilty. But you're a small fry. I'm after the big guy who shoved you around. I don't want you talking. Please, Blackie, let me handle this my way. I've got a pretty good case proving you killed Craddock. Don't be a sap. I can account for every second of my time. Yeah. What about the day you bumped off Charlie Wu? I've got an airtight alibi for that, too. Oh, so you know the date, time, place, and everything, huh? I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Smart guy. Is that the way you found him? Yes, sir. Any ideas about it? He's a popular guy. Most everybody seemed to like him. Ever hear any talk about gambling, like lottery, for instance? Mm, no, sir. I can't say that I did. I'm beginning to have a sneaking hunch there's more behind this than meets the eye. I'm sorry, mister, you can't go in. Please excuse my boldness, officer, but has my good friend, Mr. Craddock, been the victim of violence? How did you know? Isn't that obvious? You'll read all about it in the papers. I am Wong Chung Shi, merchant and man of property. I have information of grave importance to tell your superior officer. Well, this had better be good. It's getting late. I wonder what's keeping our guide. Anything wrong, folks? Well, I wish I knew. The guide got himself knocked out down in the cellar by a couple of stooges. I know it's part of the act, but does he have to keep us waiting here all day? What's the police car doing there? Well, maybe it's part of the act, too. I do not wish to give the impression that I am certain they were the criminals. I state only that I saw two men leave this cafe after Mr. Craddock's arrival and before the arrival of Henry the bartender. You know who they were? Not by name. I know them to see. They were in my shop last night and again this morning. Can you describe them? Of course. One was about so tall, well tailored, of pleasing features. His black hair is neatly and smoothly combed. The other one is smaller. His dress and manner would indicate that of a sporting gentleman, a gambler or a tout. Are you thinking the same like I am, Chief? I tell you something's wrong, and it ought to be investigated. Have them block off this whole section, Jim. See that nobody comes in or out of Chinatown. Send out word to pick up Blackie in the run. Yes, sir. Hung low. On your way, Big Ears. This is not a political rally. Pardon me, Inspector, but that's Mr. Gerard, who owns the theater down the street. I just heard the tourist guide was slugged in those tunnels. He probably had it coming, though. But two guys knocking him out like that ain't part of the act. Did you say two guys? That's right. You know your way around down there? Well, I've been through with Les a couple of times. He's the one they slugged. Get those yokels back off the sidewalk and on the bus. Yes, sir. You come with me. Oh, Blackie, this is where we came in. Please, leave us kick him around a little bit. The inspector is here in Chinatown. You must get out right away. Well, what about him? I'll take care of that. Be a couple of the actors who work here. Have you seen Les anywhere around? Me, no, oh, see, me, no, see. Oh. oh, oh, Les, Les. I don't suppose you know who did this. That man is a crook, and he should be in jail. Who, Les? She's out of her mind. He gets hit on the head, and he's the crook. He's coming around. Les, Les, it's me, Paul oh. Gerard. Who hit you? Two guys dressed like our Chinese actors. She was with them. Those two fellows we just saw, were they Blackie and the Runt? I wouldn't know, sir. Oh, oh try and pull yourself together. Yeah. Yeah. 
The minute that guide comes to, the cops will start tearing up the sidewalks. Yeah, and we couldn't be attracting more attention if we was cons in striped suits. Yeah, we better get out of sight. How about the movie house? Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah. Go, please. Oh, fraternity initiation. <laughs> well, as long as we're here, we might as well enjoy the show. Never mind the show, just keep your eyes open. Turn out of headquarters and Booker. Aiding and abetting's the charge. Okay, Inspector. You feel well enough to drive this bus? Yeah, I'm all right. I'll get into it and run those people out of here. Sure. Thanks for everything. We'll let you know if we need you again. I checked all the passengers, Chief. Blackie and the run ain't amongst them. Certainly they're not amongst them. They're hiding out in some cellar like a couple of rats. They'll have to come up sooner or later, but we're not going to wait for that. We're going to smoke them out. Let's find out what she was doing in there. What is all excitement about? The police are looking for a couple of gangsters. Oh, gangsters? What they look like? They're white men, but they're dressed like Chinese. Oh. Oh, Mr. Gerard. see my hand in front of my face. Well, stop looking for it and feel around for a light. Oh, my foot! Shh, boy. I what she'd be doing in a place like this. If it ain't big enough to play a game of solitaire. Oh. Is this the way to the men's lounge? Step through there and go on down. Come on. Ralph, it's me, Gerard. Hiya. Oh, what happened? These guys know too much. If the cops find this setup, we're cooked. I keep moving. Blackie, I don't think these guys are kidding. Did Red get out? Yes, and she took everything. Good. Now see that they don't make a sound. Yes, sir. Mind if we sit down? But, sir, they went in. I'm sure about it. Two men making like Chinese. That's them. Uh, maybe they went out through the fire exit. I doubt it. I've got men posted in the alley. Let's make a double check. Turn on the house lights. Yes, sir. Sounds like cops' feet. Probably Faraday checking the audience. Oh, I never knew the sound of flat feet could be so beautiful. Uh, how long have you been in this country? That is none of your concern. Well, I was just wondering. An expert diamond cutter usually doesn't have to work in a hole like this. I am not a diamond cutter. <laughs> now, don't tell me you use those tools for making lampshades. I must insist that you keep quiet. I get it. You're the old boy's trigger man, huh? I do not understand such words. No? Sounds like they're going away. 
Tom, go out the back way and check with the boys. We'll be out front. Okay, you can go on with your picture. I've got it, Runt. What do you say we send Faraday on his way with a great big cheer, huh? Now you're talking. All together now. One, two... Quiet! I do not like to do this, but if you make a shout, I will be forced to. Thanks, pal. It's a very good idea. Go on, shoot. What's the matter, Fred? You'll bring the cops? Stay where you are. Go on, shoot me, I dare you. Kill me the way you killed Craddock and old Charlie Wu. I never kill anybody. That was Gerard, not I. Gerard, huh? My usher could have been mistaken, you know. If you want my opinion, Inspector, they left this neighborhood long ago. Well, thanks for your trouble. Come on, Matthews. Sounded like a backfire, didn't it? Yeah. That didn't sound like no backfire to me, Chief. Since when did you become such an expert? You wouldn't know a backfire from a blast. Things. That's in the picture they're playing here. Oh. Wait a minute, Chief. Huh? Them shots couldn't have been in the picture. I saw it. It's a story about Robin Hood. They didn't have no guns in them days. Get back in there and turn on those lights again. He's not a killer. Lucky for all of us, Gerard's such a bad shot. Better call an ambulance for him. Get the meat wagon for this guy. What kind of a setup do you call this? Just a hobby of mine, making Chinese costume jewelry. Recutting stolen jewels is what he means. That's a lie. This may be the answer to all those lists of missing gems they're talking about down at headquarters. You don't say. And here all the while you had it figured for a lottery racket. What do you mean I had it figured? I said right along this looked like something bigger. But, Chief, I distinctly remember in my mind... It... Forget it. No doubt you two got hepped to this and tried to muscle in. That's right, Inspector. They were trying to hold me up. But uh, that idea of stolen goods is strictly for the birds. I hate to change the subject, Inspector, but a redhead just left here with all the evidence you need. You seem to know quite a lot. Yes, I do. Sorry, miss, but you can't go through. What have I done, officer? Oh, nothing personal, just a number 32. Number 32? Uh, yes, ma'am. The district's blocked off. Oh, I see. Well, uh, would you have any objection if I were to look at the antiques in the shop up here? Not at all. Go ahead. Thank you. I can't make up my mind. These are obviously of exquisite craftsmanship and also have great simplicity of line. You're very right. Could I think it over? Of course. Thank you. Good day. Oh, tea. I'd like some tea, please. Uh, which blend would you like, miss? I prefer jasmine. There's the redhead, Inspector, and that's the clerk. Look at our bag. You'll see if I'm kidding. What are you going to do? I'm going to search your bag. Now what, mastermind? It's got to be here somewhere. I know she had it on her. Well, we'll have to open all those packages. Okay, Blackie. Matthew, search that tea. All of it? Yes. We're going to give Blackie plenty of rope. Please, Inspector, who's going to pay for this? I will if he doesn't find anything. Go ahead, Matthews. It's Blackie's party. Oh, Inspector, while he's doing that, would you mind sending one of the boys with Runt to pick up our clothes? All right, Tom, you go with the fellow. You come here. Mr. 
Still drawing blanks? You better weigh that tea and add up what this fellow owes you. And besides that, the bus driver will probably file a complaint against me for false arrest. Well, this is the last of it. Never mind adding it up, Wong. This ought to cover everything. Huh? That's all, Matthews. Come on. Hey, Chief, look. A diamond. There's more. Lots of them. I owe you an apology, Blackie. That's all right, Inspector. You had me fooled, Wong. Your pardon, Inspector. Mr. Wong is blameless. It would seem that I am the one at fault. Every so often, this lady paid me well to give a certain package of tea to her sweetheart, the tourist guide. She said it was only for fun. She sent him notes and gifts that way. I thought it was romantic, not criminal. Really, I did. We let the judge decide that, son. He's telling the truth, Inspector. Shut up. Let the lawyers do the talking. That's a good idea. Matthews, Tom, put these three under arrest. You've won, my friend. Thank you, Wong. And thank you, Blackie. That's all right, Inspector. What are you going to do with all this tea? I'm giving it to the gentleman as a gift. <laughs> Gee, Blackie, now you can brew enough tea to float half a Chinatown. Say, that's not a bad idea. Why don't we have a party? Great. It'll be the biggest tea party in history, the Boston Blackie Tea Party. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.